Welcome to another video from Product One Self Help Series. Today we're going to be looking at circular references, how to analyze them, and how to avoid these errors. Firstly, what is a circular reference? A circular reference indicates an assembling error where a component refers to one of its children. <clears throat> As an example, let's assume we have an assembly with just two parts. If an assembly coordinate was created, that references the second part, okay, the child, and then the second part was moved with respect to that newly created coordinate system, a circular reference will be created. Let me show you what I mean by that. Here I have a basic cupboard. I'm planning to build on my patio. I have the box shape with all of its subparts or planks. And then I have one of the doors. When I created the door, I just want to show how I use the top down to design it. So when I created the door, I originally used the default constraint and I designed the door referencing the cupboards. And here we can see our top reference line, our constraints here on the bodies. I only have the dimension in it. <coughs> But I wanted to check the swivel envelope or reach of the door so when we open. So I redefined the door and assigned a pin connection. By doing this, I created a circular reference. <clears throat> because I designed it, I have a better idea of what went wrong or what I changed. So it's quite easy to undo the changes, you know, delete the pin connection and just assign the default. What if you weren't the original designer <clears throat> or have hundreds of parts but don't know where the issue is? For this example, I have this bracket and pin assembly here. I know it's not hundreds of parts, but the idea stays the same. To find the fault, I'm just going to regenerate. I'm going to click on our notification center. Left click again on the circular reference. And this is where you will find a list of circular references in which or in, and in which assembly or subassembly they can be found. Left click on the one you wish to resolve. We only have one here, so I'm going to select that. And here you have two options. First one being the circular reference report or the reference view. Now I'm just going to show the circular reference report. Uh, this so like a log file gives you the feature number and it's found in which ID of part or assembly. Uh, it just gives you a list of names essentially with the feature ID. I don't typically like using this. I prefer using the reference viewer as it can highlight the components and features in question instead of just giving names. But with the reference viewer open, we can navigate to the paths tab. And at the bottom here, you'll see a list of circular paths within the assembly. As I select that, you'll see on the right hand window um, some names at the top. And by hovering over the items found here, you can see the part and feature highlighting. Um, or indicated here with a highlight uh, that's found within the circular reference. So in this case, we have the second part, which we can call the pin, referencing the extrude one feature, which then references the revolve one feature, which loops back as it was the starting block for the pin. <clears throat> it will take some time to understand how to view this window. But basically, let's say I select the pin component. On the left, you will see the parents. And reading from top to bottom, we can see that the component was placed using references such as the assembly top plane, sheet metal extrude, and extrude cut. These are references from the assembly and the first part or the bracket. Then we have the top plane and x-axis from the pin. 
as they were used to constrain the part into place. But at the bottom, we see the extrude feature from the, compin, uh, from the pin component listed as a parent. This is the first sign that something is right. We can do the same for the other features in the pin component. And you will notice that extrude one is both a parent and a child of the revolve feature. Now the question is, how is a feature within the pin apparent to the pin? So we have a look at how the pin is constrained because that is typically the first process when placing a new component in the assembly. So we edit the definition on the pin, go through the constraints. So the first one is our coincident to the x-axis. Parallel is that top plane, just referencing the assembly top. And then at the bottom, we notice that our last constraint is a tangent referencing the extrude one feature. I'm simply going to delete this constraint. So I don't want to reassemble it just yet. I just want to see if this is the cause. So we'll still see that pop up. I'm just going to hit the regenerate on screen. And there we can see it pops back into place. It's of course not um, constrained properly. So I'm just going to edit it again. And I believe it's that's the right plane. But you'll also notice that this has displaced a little bit because of that circular reference. So I'm just going to do this. Yes. And then I'm going to regenerate again. There we can see it gets back. And that's how you will go about analyzing and assessing the circular references and in the end fix anything related to them. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Stay tuned for more Product One self-help series.